Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Throwbacks with SBC. I am your host, Risia Paul, the marketing coordinator here at Shopa Complex. And of course, I am joined by my boss and co-host, Mr. John Arnold. At Throwbacks with SBC, it is where we have been assessing the events and functions that we've facilitated at our um, compound or facility. Um, and we've been doing this with our stakeholders, very, very important stakeholders. Um, and these would have been event promoters, artists, um, various organizations that have held events there. And today is no different. This morning, we're welcoming Mr. Tom Lee Roberts. Um, he is the president of the Tobago Visual Arts Association, and he himself is an artist in and of himself who has works displayed at Show Park, but we will get into that later on. Tom Lee, good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So, morning, um, morning, Tom Lee. Yeah, morning. <laughs> So, okay, so before we get into things, I kind of want to go far to come there. So I want to hear about how you started in terms of the arts. I know that I would have read that as a child growing up, you would have had the freedom of expression artistically. And then over the years, you would have received formal training and you would have been mentored by various people. But how did it all start for you as Tom Lee, the artist? Okay, um, I think um, it started all for me, as you indicated, as a child. Um, my mom, Christina Fraser Osman, uh, she would have identified some sort of talent in me as a child. And she decided to give me some support and allow me to be creative. As a child, we had what is called like hot plum trees that you're familiar with. The hot plum trees usually have some rough backs. And as a child, I would go at that tree and I would break off those back and I engage in a lot of carving and so forth. So I did, uh, during primary school, I did a lot of wood carving. I made jewelry. I sold those jewelry as a child. We we're very familiar with the transformer, right? I used to make transformer as a child um, because, you know, I, I probably didn't purchase toys. I made a lot of my toys. Oh, wow. And that was, I guess, where my mom saw that. And a uh, villager, uh, I am from the village of Bethel, heard about an art program back in the early 80s conducted by the Division of Culture, I think at the time, under Miss Cynthia Alfred and Mr. Vel Lewis. Vel Lewis, okay. And, yes, yeah. and that was at Orange Hill. And she decided to enroll me in that program at the time. I, I didn't think that I was all that good. I went and I met other students from Tobago who, in my opinion, were exceptional in art. I, I remember one guy, Ainsley John, he, he drives Max, you know, but he was an exceptional artist. So it started there for me on the, the Fine Art Center in Orange Hill. I did, interestingly, uh, painted, yeah. paper fold, painted paper folding. I did flower arrangement, drawing, painting, sculpture, etc. And that was an exciting time. Um, so much that I went back three times. And well, after that, I went to Scarborough State Primary School. After primary school, then went on to Harmon School of SDA. My teacher there was Mr. Errol Phillip. And at the time, uh, Harmon's wasn't doing the art program. And he initiated the program there. And I was tutored by him. And he, you know, encouraged me to pursue it further from Harmon's. I then went on to the University of the West Indies and from the University of West Indies, I also did some what you call digital and analog photography, which was a collaboration with the Max Media and Training Services here in Tobago and the John Donaldson Technical Institute in Trinidad. So that's digital and analog photography. I did some of that as well. Um, after you and all of that, I then returned to Tobago um, to Speyside High School. But just before that, I did an internship uh, as a curatorial trainee at the National Museum and Art Gallery in Trinidad. And that was also under Mr. Vel Lewis at the time. Right? So that was an, as an OJT. So I would have done that. Uh, so immediately after UBI I returned to Tobago. In fact, I was summoned to Tobago. In fact, Miss um, Hackett would have 
contacted me. She was the principal at Speyside at the time. Harmons also did in fact contact me, but Miss Hackett was very quick in getting us stuff together. So by the time I received the call, yeah, by the time I received the call, the following week, I was in Speyside High School, and and Speyside has been a very interesting place for my artistic development. In fact, the Speyside High School um, gave me the latitude as an artist, as an art educator, to really broaden my horizon. Now, Speyside High School is prided, um, prized for developing unconventional strategies. And at Speyside High School, I was given the privilege to do what is called an art appreciation program. Now, this art appreciation program was a very extensive program that sus caused the suspension of all formal classes. So for an entire week, students would be doing painting, drawing, sculpting, textile for the entire week. So that was something I did at Speyside and it's something that we're going to do from time to time. Um, uh, well, I've been doing a lot of different things with Space at High School over the years. We've had many success stories. I've been instrumental in assisting many students in uh, being the best in the Tobago and also in the region. And we continue to do that as a school. So I think Space Ad is really uh, a beautiful organization that has, I would want to say, as part of, part of its developmental procedure that we really emphasize that all students can learn and we create a platform for them to learn and that was done very extensively in the form of art well, although i'm still at space at high school i've also been involved in the tobago visual arts association well we will get into that a bit more <laughs> miss Sanal. i feel like you have a question brimming to the surface there <laughs> Brimming. <laughs> I have loads of questions. No, I mean, what, what I like there, Tom Lee, is I think you gave us enough meat there for us to... To, to dissect, on, yeah. Yeah, to really say, hey, you know, we deal with somebody that we understand where the passion comes from. Because, you know, my thing is that the passion and knowledge has to come together. But most of course, definitely, most sense definitely. Of, of working real hard to make anything successful. Right. And um, I mean, your your work speaks for itself. But um, I I, I want to drive you to Shoba Complex because I think interestingly, between yourself and Dr. James Armstrong, mm -hmm. when the whole idea of the Tobago art collection came up. Mm -hmm. I think immediately we saw the role you played and the role Dr. Armstrong played. Um, my role, of course, is anything with the arts, I'm, I'm totally with it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really think that, that that aspect that was done, the book that was actually done featuring all the key artists, not only of now, but of yesteryear, and also understanding the history of art in Tobago. I remember when the art society used to meet downstairs with the same um, house of assembly legislature yes. upstairs, yeah. downstairs. Yeah. I remember that vividly. I remember people like Edward Hernandez, you know. You know and, and I was a young man, eh? I was yeah, a I think young man. You had a relative there. Yeah, yeah, Inola Arnold. Inola Arnold, so, yes. Yeah, yeah, she was one of the pioneers. So I was really glad that you thought of it, and I think you always showed the thing about art for Tobago. But but let's kind of focus on the show park complex. Um, what for you, at that time we were talking, what for you was some of the immediate aims or objectives you wanted to achieve from where you sat? What were some of those? Well, one of the immediate aims and objective was, of course, to outfit Shaw Park with lots of artwork to make it ideally an artistic hub, not just here for Tobago, 
but for the region, because what you need to understand is that the facility at Shaw Park Complex is second to none in the region. And I'm saying if we have such a magnificent facility, then we must do all in our power to ensure that it truly exhibits all of our artistic culture, be it the, the, the dance, the theater, the visual arts especially. Right, so I think um, it's a beautiful space. So my sp my um, vision was to have this place outfitted. We have roving exhibitions over and over and over. I, I think at least every two or three months, we should be having an exhibition at Shaw Park. We would have people, the tourists as well, coming in and actually capitalizing and learning a lot about all history here in Tobago, all artistic culture, because Tobago, in my opinion, um, possesses uh, more artists and talent per capita than any place in the world. So, and Shopa Complex is the place to develop this, is the place to house this, is the place where a lot of different things can happen. So I really was hoping and still is hoping that the partnership can continue, the one that we have started with the Tobago Visual Arts Association, and the shop are complex. No, uh, no, that, that, there's no doubt about that. That that is not going to stop. Um, your 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 colleague, also who did Expo Art, um, your colleague Superville. Mr. Superville. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Also, expressed the fact that he belongs to your TVA, um, which I I am very glad to hear. Um, and my thing is that, as a hub, I have absolutely no no issue. Um, you know. We have had several exhibitions, which you know. Um, yes, you yourself have, have had. Um, Nakid has had. Um, mm -hmm. um, what's the lady down at Scarborough Sec? Um, of Janine Crouch, lead. Janine Crouch, Crouch. right. Yes. Her, thing is, her thing is different, but it's nice. It's artistic, yes. as she has done. Um, and our thing is really to be the hub for that. Now, there are two things that we have to work on, and I'm glad we're on this forum because you can talk about it. One is we still don't have a society that appreciates art in the way it should. And two, I mean, one of, the, one of my, my serious mm -hmm. passions is when I travel, I go to loads of art, um, art museums, loads of them whether it be Canada, the States, I go because what I like to see, I see people sit on benches in front of an art piece and don't move for an hour, sometimes hours. Um, and they talk about, people express their thing about therapy, what this art does to them every day, they come and watch it and so on. And you see a different kind of appreciation. The traffic is, I mean, constant. It's not, you know, sporadic. Here, there's several persons who have come to show up. And if you don't point it out that this piece, this piece, they pass the corridors and they don't even see. Mm -hmm. So what for you is one way, I know the education would be one way, that we can certainly have that. We've had tourists come from the, the, the um, cruise ships, walk past, you can come, check it out. Um, and we have also had um, persons from right here who have a sense of, of art who have come to look at it. But, but what in your mind are some of the things we can do to raise the level, not, not just of awareness, but of appreciation? I'll give you one more example before I open the floor to you. Um, I remember somebody having an event and right where we have that piece with the goat racing at the opening. Yeah. They had a whole heap of boxes stacked up against the painting. Mm -hmm. And I came to work and I had to now just literally blue, blue steam, you know, I to now imagine. give them a whole lecture as to the art is a product. You know, you're oh. blocking the product and you're also going to damage it with having those boxes, and then they move the boxes. But what I'm saying is, if they had a sense of appreciation of the art, I wouldn't need to tell them, don't put those boxes against the art piece. So how, how do you feel that we can do that? 
All right, immediately as a people, this would need to start, of course, in our education system. At this point, we would need to inform our students, encourage them, have them understand the importance of the development of art, not just as a relaxing agent, but also as a, a viable industry. Um, secondly, I also believe that the government, in our case, the Tobago House of Assembly, play a very major role in ensuring that this is done. Um, we need to ensure, let's say, for example, my, my philosophy is that as tourists come off the boat, they should immediately be infused with our arts and our culture, move down straight to the Esplanade, and then actually come on to the taxis and so forth, where they have a nice hub with all the artistic work and so forth. Right, so, so I think the assembly plays a pivotal role. We need to, one, ensure that there are avenues for artists in Tobago, as, as a government, right? Across the world, government do several things for artists. And we need to ensure, it's not that you're giving handout, but you're putting certain infrastructure in place to ensure that the artists benefit and so that they can continue to develop the craft and we would also leave a legacy. Because as important as I indicated earlier, Tobago possess a lot of talent. Initially, when I was younger, and wanted to get involved in art. People ask me, what's Trippin' is it when you want to get involved in art? You can't make any money in Trinidad and Tobago. But what I could say is that the artists in Trinidad and Tobago, especially those in Tobago, they keep quiet. They do their thing. They meet their resources. And they have nothing to tell anybody. <laughs> you continue to see that they don't make any money. And they love it when you see that. But artists have been very successful, right, in Tobago here. And we don't have many artists, right, but the government plays a pivotal role, I'll take you further. Um, a few years ago, as I said, there was the Orange Hill Fine Arts Center. And then there's the Fine Arts Center of the Fort. And that Fine Arts Center of the Fort has been defunct for a very long time. Yeah. And we've had yeah. successful and it was a good leaders. Place. Yeah. Yes, we, we had Ochoa Charles, we had Over London, we had um, Dinoon, all of these persons, and that building is just an empty shell. It holds some artifacts. But that building was specifically for the artists of Tobago, and it is still there dormant. So I am hoping that this time around, um, we, will, we will continue to make our overtures to the assembly. We want this space, not just for the visual arts, but for the arts. If we can't have that space, then give us another space. Let this be a Tobago space. Now, we have Shopper complex, but you need to understand that Shopper creates a different type of aesthetics, and it's for a different type of thing. You want workshops to happen. You want all these things to happen, and a finer center is ideally the place for that. We still have some empty rooms up the fort where the new medical facility has been reestablished. So I am hoping that if we can, you know, do some sort of dialogue and that place can be a really nice artistic hub for the region. Man, Tobago is poised to do so much. We have the talent, we have the capacity. Don't talk about the resources. We have the resources. Somebody just needs to decide and say, hey, well, this is where we are going. <laughs> Tom Lee. Tom Lee. You're in trouble, boy. Tom Lee. We need firm policy. Yes, definitely. So remember policy. Remember, John, we have firm policy. policy. Yes. Right? And then we need champions. Uh, I've been using that word in the last few weeks. We need mm -hmm. champions. Persons chance, of course. who are at the top who will say, this is where we have to go. The creative economy um, has a big role to play in Tobago, a massive definitely. role. And I think um, the last few weeks, we've been doing a lot of these stakeholder meetings. And I mean, I, I've said it over and over again. Once we start to put structure in place, once we start to educate people about what they need to do, how they need to raise their game, how we can, and then THA government develop policy that we stick to. It Definitely mustn't be a partial thing. We stick to it. And yes. we also say that we want to have some metrics associated with this. How many artists, you remember when I asked you the other day, yes. how yes. many art students pursue art after they finish passing mm -hmm. it 
at, at CSEC or, or GC or yes. whatever level you all call it now. Um, yes. How many students? Um, and we need to do the same thing. We need to be looking for singers, for dancers. I've been asking people, do you all have an aim that we want to have? You see three classical dancers. You have, you have already seen them. <coughs> um, excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. You still see persons who are going to develop as good playwrights, right? Um, based on what they're writing, giving you, and so on. So if we start up with some structure, all of these things, seeing an artist, you, you know, you show me the thing the other day with Jamaica, uh, with the artist on market, um, <laughs> because that shows a flow. Here's something showing the best, and Jamaica is really solid with that. Yes, yes. But yes. me and you, we will always agree on this point of a firm policy for the arts in Tobago. Yes. And that's why Shoba is a costly place and there's a cost of ownership. You know, if you own a place, yes. there's a cost of ownership. And I continue oh, to yeah. tell all my principals that that is the fundamental thing, that we want to keep a place that's top, that it's premier, it benchmarks with anywhere else, but we have to create policy so we don't move from it. Definitely, John. I think the policy is important and that would govern exactly how we treat with that sacred space, even at Shopa Complex, because you need to maintain the facility, as you indicated, and it's very, very costly. And once we have an appreciation for that, this is taxpayers' money. We've invested a lot in it. It's the best in the region. So we need to protect it and ensure that it's secured. Furthermore, Tobago Visual Arts Association, we are indeed championing this course at this point in time in Tobago. So whether we have the resources or not, we establish partnership with our stakeholders and so forth, and we do what we have to do. In the next few weeks, we'll be establishing a partnership with um, Mercy Buku, and we'll be doing our art gallery space yeah, there. I I, yeah. Yes, so yeah. we'll be doing that. So we are not sitting down and waiting for handouts. We are doing what we have to do, but in the meantime, the government need to understand, in my opinion, that resources will spend. We need to protect these things. Let's look, for example, the, um, the, the stick figure at Signal Hill. That is an excellent lookout, and that place is, is almost a derelict right now. And I am saying we need to have some what, sort what, of... What, what do you call it? What do you call it? No, it, it, well, it's, it's like a derelict. <laughs> a owner What's discard. that? What, what do you call it? Right. right. Uh, the stick figure, <laughs> right? I'm no, saying that's not a it's, stick figure. It's, it has a name. The ring bang, ring bang monument. The, the ring, ring bang, bang monument. monument. That's what it right. is. It still and stands I, as the only, the only symbolic refer, reference to moving from the 20th century to the 21st. Exactly. I have an entire right up on this thing. So no, no. I, I mean, my recommendation is that it be declared one of the historic sites of Tobago. Yeah. Right. And I am saying so. No, no, call, it call it what it is. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's um, it's just for a while I couldn't remember the name, but it's uh, yeah, a ring 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 yeah. that yeah. has some political connotations. I did an entire little write up on it because I think it's significant for tourists to know about it. It's significant for people. So all these things, you can't have this sort of investment being made and we just have it there, glory, glory cedar, encasing it and so forth. We need to do better. We need to do better when that is concerned. No, no, I, I, and you have my full support on that because I, 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 I have been saying that. My thing is that, that it also, you know, as a the board and the sign you will put there, we'll not only talk about Rainbow, the concept, but it also talks about that was also a political change. Definitely, in society, Definitely. and all these mm -hmm. things are part of our history. We can't ignore it. <laughs> Definitely. You know? So, so the. Um, the the art association definitely within the next few months, Tobago Visual Arts Association will be embarking on some very vigorous things that would see an a development of more public art and we are hoping to partner 
with our with our stakeholders of course the assembly the government whoever is interested and really transform tobago and make it a really ideal place right so we're going to be doing our bit we're just hoping that we have all the partnership we are encouraging people to partner with us and let us really transform tobago and do the best that we can for our space you talk see, about, we see, I must about 10 questions on your face yeah, on your face. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we were just really passionate about just art in general in Tobago, but coming back to the TVAE and the mm -hmm. work that you all have done at Showpark, I know that um, last year for Carrie Festa, um, one yes. of the main features would have been the art exhibition that you all would have had. Um, I would have seen some of the pictures are going to be displayed now, but I know that there was also like a video that would have been created by the... Um, the mm. TVAA and part mm. of that would have been responses from some of the visitors, patrons, and there was one woman in particular that said that she was so surprised of the quality of art in Tobago. She was saying she literally said, like, I didn't know it had artists like this in Tobago. Um, in terms of the work, I know that, okay, in Tobago, you may not necessarily have the greatest level of appreciation for art, but what is the response um, to the work of Tobagonian artists outside of Tobago? Well, the work of Tobagonian artists is really, really, really appreciated globally, right? Um, artists, as I said, are very successful in their entrepreneurial activities. Um, so the work is really appreciated. So when you go in a space, even to Trinidad, from the time you do an exhibition, you say, oh, this is from Tobago, and you get a different level of, it, of respect. Now, Tobago culture is separate from any other culture globally. So when you, you produce artwork, it also says that, and people recognize that, and they want to be a part of this, what you call artistic vernacular. So I would want to say, that it is very respected um, globally and artists here continue to do what they have to do. It's just that those are major infrastructural changes need to be put in place. Uh, Tobago Fine Art Center, a Tobago space for artists to come and exhibit. We need to really, really do that. And uh, I do some, I've heard before that some person said, let Shopak be the space. Now Shopak, as I indicated, is a really nice space and it possesses great room for us to exhibit art, right? Ideally, I have no problem with that. We have some more, we, we have actually occupied the first two floors in terms of art, Mr. Arnold, right? Yeah, so yeah, now because those, are the, those are the floors that, yeah. that has the traffic, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Terms of, so we need to occupy um, some attended, more, but then yeah. that hub need to be done. So we have been working with the Shopper Complex. We did the Carifesta initiative um, that was really, really exciting. It was really great. Um, the guest, um, um, Hinkson, Hinkson is her name, right? Um, she spoke about the, she didn't know that there was so much art in Tobago. As I said, there's oh, so yeah. much art in Tobago, right? Some artists have become disgruntled because they're not getting the support. I'll tell you, I met a guy, um, his name is Harold George. Uh, about two years ago in Mason Hall, and he was producing some very unusual carvings from wood for over 14 years, and nobody knew about him, right? But through the Visual Arts Association, we found him and we asked him to exhibit his work and so forth, and we are hoping to create something very spectacular with his work, because it's very indigenous to Tobago, yeah. right? So His work um, would have filled the room, right? Yes, okay. yes, definitely. Listen, the 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 um, I have a, this guy who is a cartoonist. I think mm -hmm. I spoke to you about him, and we we promised that we will bring him. Yes, yes, yes. What he's definitely. doing is so these humorous cartoon the, as a cartoonist. Yeah. So the way I see Shobat is as a hub of reference, yes. meaning people come in, do the thing out, and next one come in. I don't yes. see it as a place as the home i think the finance center is a beautiful Definitely. suggestion to have that as a home but i think in context of keeping dynamism and giving everybody the opportunity of being able to um to to um showcase certainly do, yes in terms of doing that i think we have to admit that yes um so that is the place Shobak, Shobak is the place. So yes. we, we have that lined up. 
We have had a few people do their thing. I just, this guy, Dion Jacob, just spoke to me. He wants to do an exhibition of his work. Um, I have another friend, Caroline Ravello in Trinidad, who wants to bring her work. So I think it's a nice thing. I know of several people, persons who want to do that. I think the networking between the artists here coming together, I told some of the fashion people uh, recently, it's amazing. People are in fashion in Tobago and don't know each other. And they're operating at a certain level, but they're not networking, coming together, you see, collaborating. You see, you see you know, that, that is the me. unfortunate, John. Because in Tobago, what we need to understand, or globally, we need to understand that we can't work in silos. You know, uh, partnerships, no, no, no. partnerships are very, very important. So, so we've been encouraging artists, regardless of what you do, yeah. let us come together, let us work under one umbrella, so that we have a united voice and we can then, you know, dialogue and negotiate for stuff. But if, but people sometimes want to be on their own and do their stuff. While that is important, it is necessary to establish um, certain types of partnership because that is the way a civilized world would, right? So we need to ensure that we encourage artists. And even at this moment, I'm putting in a plug for other persons or other artists in Tobago. You yeah. need to be part of the yeah. Tobago Visual Arts Association. That is the only indigenous art organization at this point in time in Tobago that fosters for the development no, no, yeah, totally of artists. Yeah, totally. so they need to get on board, get on yeah, board, yeah. right? Yes. And, together, and I don't have a have problem to... when people separate, um, but we need to work together. So the definitely, association definitely. brings everybody in one place and we can all have our scene in the communities yeah. wherever we have our own galleries. Yeah, that's yes. great. You know, right? And so, so we continue. <laughs> you can finish your thoughts on me. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we continue to do what we have to do. As I said, we're going to be really embarking on some some art in public spaces within the next few months. That is going to be huge. It's going to be the first of its kind in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we have been doing our art on the beach, but due to the COVID and so forth, mm -hmm. we have not been able to do that. So, of course, I've been. I have one idea that I shared on an earlier program. Mm -hmm. If you look at the work of Haiti, it's called Ghetto Bayanale. Um, mm -hmm. You can check it out. So okay. what they do is, I think we need to do something similar. We need to have musicians, artists, dancers, everybody come into a space for a week mm -hmm. and they come in empty head and the interaction creates all the work for the week the okay. compositions the art influence what people decide to draw on and then you do a massive um program at the end of that it is a, a model that's being used all over the world now in africa what have you but what it does is that it moves people from the silos into that thing about integrating and working together and I think it's something we need to discuss because you have to come into this space not with anything ready. Mm -hmm. I must come into this space, I must have a piano, I must have any ideas about what I want to compose. The interactions must create what comes up. Similarly, the artist, what he's going to paint must come from the interaction. And then you do that as a display concert. You, you can't beat that. I, I think that, that's me. an excellent idea. Yeah. Excellent yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, do you have a dated mind, sir? <laughs> no, no, no. It's something I said we have to talk about because no, well, I, I recently was exposed to it through, the, through a program in the UK. And uh, when I saw and heard the strength of it, I said, this is something will drive us out of that silo story. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because it isn't you coming and say, I know this, I know that. It yes, is yes, yes. your we'll work it competence together. working together. Yeah, that's going to bring it. Yeah, yes. So you can think so about I, that. So, well, I definitely thought of it already. And I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> we can establish a clear date. And it's something that we can achieve. <laughs> we can achieve that before the year is out. It's not um, yeah, insurmountable. Yeah, I think it's an, an excellent way. And uh, we should approach the, the Tobago House of Assembly and say, you know, can you fund this? We want to take 
10 persons from the artistic community, 20 persons. We can you find them being in a hotel somewhere or somewhere where a residency where they can work for the week. The so what I could assure you, what you know? I could assure you, coming out from this discourse, the secretary with responsibility for um, culture and the arts and tourism and so forth, Mr. Dennis, he would be receiving his documentation in the shortest possible time so that we can charter this initiative. And uh, based on the present trend, I am hoping that he will <laughs> lift this ideology and you know move ahead with it. So I, I am listening to you and I am jumping on it right away. And we're gonna attack it. Now we should give him some talk. Yes, I'm done. Yes, definitely. Yeah. There's something I don't else we're running out of time. Marisa, what's our timing like? Um, we could go probably like probably five minutes more. Ooh, because I probably feel like Tommy has a lot more in him with his passion and determination. And I like that he's holding you to specific dates and not just, you know, ideas up in the air. No, well, I am the way how I operate is that once the idea hits me, I look on I, I try to make it happen, right? I, I do not facilitate negative energy and so forth. I look at possibilities, regardless of resources. How can we get this done? All right, so a lot of good things have been happening in Tobago. A lot of good things are continuing to happen in Tobago, and a lot of good things will be happening in Tobago. And the Tobago Visual Arts Association will be center with most of these developmental initiatives. Uh, I also want to see um, the, the sign. There was so much discourse about the sign, the I Love Tobago sign in, in, in Scarborough. And from an artistic point of view, I would want to say it's a beautiful initiative. Um, people had problems with the color and so forth. You see, when you have changing tell elements me, of color. Don't go down that road. No matter what you do, <laughs> don't matter what you do, always remember it's this. A, some are going to like it, some are not going to like it. I no, don't, I don't, it. Don't, I don't even go through the rhetoric with it. That's I life. It. <laughs> you understand what I mean? There are some who don't think it should be there, it should be somewhere else. If you have put it somewhere else, there were going to be people who are going to argue the same way. That's how we all are. I say, Forget that. All, I, all I want to say, John. It's beautiful and it's also a step in the right direction of public That's art. That's good. Because, I, I mean, yeah. I see people stopping there all the time. Yes. All yes, the time. Yes. <laughs> Visitors yes. all the time. You know? So, but so, here's so, me, so let, let, me, let me just say, mm -hmm. um, and I think we have we've really kind of touched on a number of the things. And Probably I think lots, yes. all of yours would realize that a lot of people don't know. And this is why we have done this series. One of the things we are hearing about is um, up to this morning, a guy was telling me, they didn't realize is these programs are showing people mm -hmm. what has been going on in your park. People didn't even yes. know things were happening. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And it's a nice way to educate persons. Yes. You know, recently, I told a public servant who thought that nothing, you know, and then I, I gave her a link and mm -hmm. she was pleasantly surprised at the amount of activities that, that took place at your park, you know? In fact, and we're supporting it with evidence, you know, mm -hmm. which is very, very Shopa, good. Shore Park Complex right now is the largest exhibition or permanent collection in Tobago. Shore Park of Complex course. right now houses the largest permanent collection yeah. in Tobago, right? Yeah. So yeah. that is something we need to be proud of and it's something we yeah. need to continue to develop and really, yep. really do all that we can to make sure it continues. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I want to thank you on that. I think we want to show that, um, not so recent. The we video. Show yes, we will that. end off with a video from highlights right. from Carifesta, um 14 that would have been in 2019. So, Tom Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, was this a was pleasure. a most lively discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I want to just probably, you know... <laughs> Yeah. So, our <laughs> viewers, thank you so much for joining us. We invite you to stalk us on social media. Our handles is simply Shopa Complex on 
Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If it is that you've missed past episodes of Throwbacks with SBC, they are all available. Available. You could go back and you could binge watch all of them. Netflix has nothing on us. Um, so thank you again so much, Tom Lee. And you can stay tuned to see the video from highlights of Carifest of 14, the art exhibition by the Tobago Visual Arts Association at Shopa Complex. Thank you. Thank you, bro.